Hello YouTube newsletter and Tudor subscribers. This is Terrell from Terrell03.com. A picture of the website right here. And today is December 10th, 2019. Before I get into the newsletter that I've been written, yes, these links, they're not working. I realize it. I've sent the information now to just today. They've gotten back to me and my control panel for the affiliate programs and things have been reactivated. And these are all going to be changed moving forward. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be doing a lot of changing here on the website as time as time permits. But um, a lot to share with you for this week. And um, this is a brand new program. Like anything else, when you get it off the ground, things are going to move kind of slow. That's the way it is. And the first, well, at least at the end of the month, these videos are going to be also shared on the Black Star channel. Black, so Black Star subs have a chance to realize you need to come over to this channel. This is under my, my name, rather than Terrell Black Star. And maybe I should have gone Terrell Mystery a channel, a mystery report. But anyway, the um, we're up to 202 subscribers. And this report that I'm making now is going to be mystery report 002. And what we're doing is, we're, we're, what I'm trying to do is leave a a uh, breadcrumb trail for those that come later. Because next year, I expect this, this program is going to start rolling. And we're going to do more radio show interviews on the Christian side, showing people the three, the three witnesses, spirit, blood, and water, and then there's going to be, and then they're going to want to say, well, what's about this? What about that? And my instruction is going to be go back to Mystery Report One. This is the two Gospels of the New Testament, and I'm going to show you some more things on that. This week, we're going to be looking at the two churches of the New Testament, and the way this works is, I'm going to be in th in this newsletter here today. See, I'm presenting the two churches of the New Testament. This is real important for establishing. This removes the semantics from our deliberations. So when I'm saying gospel, and you, you, of the gospel of the kingdom, you know exactly what that is. I'm saying the word of the cross, we obey today, you know exactly what it is. When you say gospel, we don't know what each other's thinking. When we say baptism, we don't know what you're thinking. One thing I'm, I'm speaking, and you're thinking one thing, and it's I'm really thinking. I'm really sharing something different. When I say the church, what does that mean? You're talking about the Messianic Kingdom Church? You're talking about the Body of Christ Church. Which is it? Knowing the difference helps you separate kingdom doctrine from grace doctrine. Okay? So, the, those that come later are going to start at 001. This will be 002. This report number 2. See? So, it's going to be this video link will go right here. And this entire program is under construction. Whenever the newsletters started, if you go back to 2012 and look at the original newsletters, I wasn't even writing the feature articles that were written by Michael Owens, the chief um, astronomer. The first maybe 12, 13, 14, 15 newsletters, he was writing the featured articles. And there wasn't even uh, he these headings. Misreport news, there wasn't even any headings in the newsletter. So over over the years, then, then this, this is how things shaped. Brenda came along, helped us with the format, the format, a lot of this formatting and things. So the much, new, newsletters, much more appealing, you know, looking at, to look at and things. So this is number two, for the mystery report series, and um, so next week, this right here will be, the four baptisms of the New Testament, and we'll go through all that. Then something to report on right here, is this is really exciting. This link right here. That link leads you to the first radio show that I did at Awakened Radio back in 2012. How did I get a hold of that? John, the first fellow that subscribed, as soon as this the uh, notice was sent out, this new program, John like broke himself in two almost, getting to his PayPal account so he could subscribe to it. Or going to the website, clicking the button. So he could subscribe to it. And then Dave... David, the um, he is, he, David wants to be a partner with me, like new. Whenever you read a Black Star update report, then you see submitted by new. Then that's his screen name, and he was in the chat room back January 2012. And when we put this together, it was myself and Bill and new. We were it, and 
I was to put the newsletters together and keep up with all the bookkeeping and run the programs and do the radio shows and things. And Bill ran the website until he had to have a um, quintuple bypass surgery or something. And so he couldn't do it anymore. And Bill, if you're listening here, then I think about you often. And I want to make sure that you have your, uh, your links and things. You did what you did for me for six, seven years. And I greatly, I greatly, greatly appreciate it. I cannot wait to stand before all you guys in heaven. And my turn, it's my turn to stand up front. And then those that helped me in, you know, over the course of my life. Because we're going to give rewards to those who helped us. They gave to us and we're going to give back. Same thing for you guys that are supporting me. I'm looking very much forward to that. And right at the top of the list is going to be new. It's going to be Bill, believe it or not. And um, they they stood with me, and, and to this day, looking back in time, News has been sending me these articles every single week for the Black Star report. I can't remember him ever missing one, you know, being sick or whatever. And uh, so I just want to make mention of that, that I greatly, greatly appreciate them. And John is going to be a major contributor here. He downloaded all of these all of these radio shows. And he, there was also a Black Star report with him. And he edited that out, so it's just the Bible. And now he's uploading it to his channel. And as the weeks go by, he's going to keep sending me links to the upda updated version. And then I'm going to be posting them right here. There's like 38 of them. 37, 38. I can't remember the number that he said. And so this is going to be 001 for the first radio show, 002, 003. And they're going to be in consecutive order filling up this radio section right down here and the radio section at the bottom of this newsletter that is going to be changing um this thing is all in uh, it's going to be really really great and, it, and it's really good right now don't get me wrong but it's going to be really really fantastic whenever i have um i have the time to um to invest in it like i really want to I'm kind of i'm kind of divided with a lot of projects at the moment then um uh, the next, this is the recent interview, Crystal Power. There's her YouTube channel right there, Crystal Power. That's pretty cool. Then uh, here's the YouTube link to our interview I shared with you guys already. She's interviewing me again on the 20th of this month, which is, uh, yeah, 10 days. Okay, so I'm looking forward to that. And then um, this week, see, oh, yeah, there's some things over here that I want to show you too before we go any further. Well, yeah, let me go over here. Cause I have kind of an interesting story. This is the this is the uh, for those at the Black Star channel. This is the this is the Scripture channel that's right here. But this is uh, first of all my book, The Mystery Explained, is right here. The hardcover is sixty dollars. It's uh, the retail on that is sixty six bucks or something like that. You get a used one for forty eight bucks, and um, if you get one for me. Then I have to pay shipping to here, and then I have to ship it to there. It's, and but and they only give me a small discount from my my uh, my uh, publisher. So my my cost is so high, and then uh, I was asked about shipping it to Canada. Then that's another that's another twenty five bucks anyway. So then I'm I'm just recommending if you don't have to have a signed, autographed, numbered copy, then that you can get it. You can get a new one right here for forty-eight dollars. That's that is less than it costs for me to get it from my publisher. So anyway, I want to mention that too. And then this is the new website, Christian Forms. This is this is kind of a bad story. Could not believe what happened to me over the course of this week. Very very frustrating. Went to ChristianForms.com. I have an account there since. 2004 and reconstituted my post I started answering their posts I'm in an introduction post you know haven't been there for years so I go back introduction post they banned me I couldn't I couldn't believe it so I go to uh, usmessageboard.com I've got all these posts there I did a very similar thing now, apparently I'm doing something wrong because they banned me too so I say, okay, I'm going to go to ChristianForums.net. That's kind of a newer one, I, 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 that where I wasn't a member. I posted my two churches, instead of just my two my two gospels, and then now the two churches, 
Instead of doing just this one, in other words, I had to post two of them back to back and change the link in the first newsletter. Had a lot of work to do over this banning stuff. I couldn't hardly believe it was happening to me. My first day on that website, they banned me. I got banned from three different sites. One of them, I had an account for 15 years. They banned me anyway. Like, what the heck is going on here? I couldn't believe it. So, I'm tippy-toeing around at this one. This one here is gracecenter.com. I've been a member here since 2006. You can see this post here. November 30th, 2006. That's how long I've been doing. The, this is the, about the period. If you Google my name, you're going to, in any topic, you're going to find something. On tons of websites. I was a member of maybe a dozen websites back then, posting all over the place. That was my work at the time. At this time, at this date, then I had just written The Mystery Explained. The 9-11 the investigation was just about to start. It hadn't even started yet. Well, this was all I was, this was, I thought this was my life's goal. This is my life's dream. This is my legacy. This is all I plan to do for the rest of my life until the 9-11 investigation and then Project Black Star. So, here's the the two Gospels, I mean the two churches. Here's the two Gospels. This one came out really, really good. The All the activated links don't work. But I was able to get one of my diagrams. Came out really nice, didn't it? And this is the one that I share with you guys a lot. I've been sharing with Dina a lot to help. I use it to help people see that the Bible is laid out exactly like the Tabernacle of Moses in the Temple. See the second veil, the first veil, the courts out here. The water section in blue between the two veils the holy place right hidden here and then the holy of holies well when you lay out scripture the same way 39 books 13 books 13 books this one this book right here this book right here i should say is the book of acts this second veil is the book of acts that's all you have 65 39, 13, and 13 is 65. That's 60. The only book in the Bible that has water witness attributes and blood, uh, water and blood attributes is the book of Acts. It took a long time for me to figure out the numerology and that, uh, that there was a hidden veil in here and that it turned out to be the book of Acts. And this is going to end up being the, um, the book of Acts veil right here. This veil right here is represented by a person. John the Baptist. The last two verses of the Old Testament are right here. If you just jump over to Mark 1.1, 1, 1, you go right through. Just Mark 1.1 1, 1 and the last two verses of the Old Testament helps you to see who this veil is. That's right here. So anyway, this came out pretty good. I wish the activated links would have held, I'm afraid, now of getting banned for just posting my work. I mean, who gets banned three times in one week? And from websites that, that they've been on for 15 years, that doesn't that's not supposed to be able to happen, right? Okay, so... So to get... Then the thing that... Instead of... This is not a brand new post. See, I'm, I'm, I, just re, I just updated, modified it. But whenever you come here, you can come and see the objections. The objections. Yes, uh, um, and this is my answers. You'll notice that my answers, even back then, are always longer than any of anybody that tries to come up against me in a debate. It's kind of like Elijah against the prophets of Baal. Is it in my history of debating that started before they invented the internet? Back in the 80s, I was doing this with scholars around the world. My replies are like this. Their replies are little short snippets, um, by comparison. So, um. That's what I wanted to show you and the website. And now we can go back over here, show you what I have for you. This, this uh, weekly newsletter program is all about helping people see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight using his three witnesses of spirit, water, and blood, testifying in the Holy Scriptures from Genesis 1-1 through Revelation. Once you see them, they're everywhere. Once you see them in the Scriptures, you see them everywhere in the world, and you see them within you. Once you can see it. If the if you're blinded by the um, though, well I should say it this way those blinded by denominationalism 
those that are baptized into the body of the Antichrist already. They don't know it, but they are. Mystery of iniquity. Second Thessalonians started two. There's a mystery of iniquity and there's a mystery of Christ. We're going to be going into that later in the timeline. You can put them side by side. The scriptures is four-dimensional. So when Paul is teaching about grace doctrine and the mystery of Christ, he's also giving you opposing doctrinal precepts teaching the mystery of iniquity. For example, we are, whenever we obey the gospel, we are baptized into Christ on the cross 2,000 years ago. We die with him, we're raised with him, we're seated in the heavenly places right now. Our redemption is through his shed blood. Right? That's the gospel. God sent him to die for us. And um, forgiveness of our sins is through him. Our redemption is in him. It's really that simple. When you start adding works to it, you say, oh, you have to be water baptized. Oh, you've got to be circumcised. Oh, you've got to do, do the sinner's prayer. You've got to say the sinner's prayer or else you're not saved. That's adding a work. And you, the simplicity of the, of, the, of the cross, the simplicity of the message, or the foolishness of the message preached, it's just simply preaching the gospel. The Holy Spirit hands that person the faith of Jesus so he can believe it. And then he's baptized into Christ. We're seated in the heavenly places. Okay, so then on the opposite side you have those that disobey the gospel. Those that obey false gospels, the mystery of iniquity. They're baptized into the Antichrist. People are waiting for the Antichrist to come and stand in the temple to fulfill Matthew 24. You can't do that. The temple's not even there. We are the temple. This is the soul period. It's the other, uh, the, um, I could pull it up right here and show you on this one right here. This is the soul of the scriptures. This is the soul period that we're moving through, through this period right now. We're getting ready to go over, the rapture happens here. We're going through the body part. This is where the physical Satan is incarnate in the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. The dragon, the beast, and the false prophet are three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. So when you're reading Revelation 13, 18, and it says, for he who has wisdom, he will understand that 666 is the number of a man. It's talking about the heavenly man, Antichrist. Three bodies that testify for Satan, a spirit, a blood, and a water. There, the three witnesses of Satan are inverted. That's why it's a false prophet as a water witness. Prophet is a spirit witness. Satan is in the prophet. I mean, I shouldn't say Satan. I should say the devil. The devil is the spirit witness. The beast, the son of perdition, whatever you want to call him, he's the blood witness, just like Jesus Christ is. He's the son of the devil. And then the false prophet is the water witness, like the Holy Spirit. Okay, so... Once you see them, you're going to see them in the scriptures. You're going to realize the Bible itself is three witnesses. It's a living thing. It has a soul, it has a spirit, and has a body. The body part is the kingdom, New Testament epistles, 13 of them. And once you get those, once we're on the same page on that, there, there's no limit to where we can go. The idea is that we have to get everybody on the same page. So this is the grace-centered link and I went back to the newsletter if you're if the those that have the Dropbox folder link to these newsletters you you may want to go back and download newsletter number one again because I've had to go back and make changes because this was this link here would have been of christianforums.com people that banned me and and my I think for that particular website that I've got a ticket and it's like being put in the corner you can't post anything you can't even adjust your profile or anything you're sitting there and I, I might sit in there for a week or a month or who knows how long because they, there's, there's nobody that's going to so I decided I'm not posting there anymore I don't ever want to post there again I don't know we'll post right here so those that want to join me in the deliberations for those posts that you just saw that is the link to this post you can go over there and register okay so this thread is dedicated to discussing the differences between the messianic kingdom church Here's all your supporting. This is where being a newsletter subscriber is really, really good. You go to that website, 
you're not going to get the, all the activated links. You want to go to Matt, you want to go to Colossians 124 and read exactly what I'm saying. His body church. And that's what we can do. I wonder if I hit control and hit this. I want to allow it. I want to see where what pops up. Cool. This is the way that I used to do it in the old days. Nowadays I'm doing I'm not doing the exact verses. I'm giving you a whole chapter. Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I do not share and in my flesh I do my share on behalf of his body, which is the church, in filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions. Of this church I was made minister according to the stewardship from God bestowed on me for your benefit, so that I might fully carry out the preaching of the word of God. That is the mystery. That's what my ministry is all about, the mystery. Ephesians 3, 1 through 4. Which has been hidden from past ages and generations, but now has been manifested to his saints, to whom God willed to make known what is the riches of the glory of his mist of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. The Christ in you is the new nature, the new man. Christ in you is heaven incarnate inside of you. The word incarnate inside of you. And inside of the word incarnate inside of you, is God incarnate inside of you, every member of Christ's body. This Christ in you, new man, is born as an infant, like Christ in the manger. He stumbles around. He is in no way, shape, or form ready to battle the old nature, which is like the devil, your old man, with the fleshy self, not ready yet. You have to build the Christ in you up. The new nature, Paul writes about it, the new man that's in you. You build him up with, guess what? The Word. The Word is manna. And the thing to realize is that all the scriptures are written for you, but some of the scriptures are written to you. Scripture is living and active, right? The whole Bible is living, has a spirit, soul, and a body, but not all of it's active. What's active is for the member of the body of Christ today is the Pauline epistles. So you try to read the Old Testament as it's written to you, and it's not going to work. You try to read the kingdom epistles, the four Gospels, Hebrews to Revelation. You try to make that apply to you, and it's not going to work either. Hebrews to Revelation is written for those that are about to live through the day of the Lord that's coming. Okay? That part of the, the scriptures will be living and active for them. Like the Pauline epistles are living and active for you. At the end of the age, the devil, the beast, and the false prophet are all going to incarnate on the earth as men. And guess what they're going to do? They're going to take the kingdom epistles that are living and active for those that are living in that day. And they're going to say, no, 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 no. We want to take the whole Bible. They're going to mix Paul's gospel in with the gospel of the kingdom. And then our word of the cross is going to be mixed with the gospel of the kingdom just like denominations do today. They take bits and pieces of this, bits and, pe bits and pieces of that, and they create a brand new gospel that God never sent to anybody. And that gets them into the unsaved pile. Right? And so that's what we want to try to avoid. Building this foundation that begins with the gospel and then the church and then the baptisms is extremely, extremely important. This newsletter... Uh, Two, extremely important. I encourage you. I'm not going to read the whole, looking at my time. wouldn't be able to go just through this post and go through everything. Well, I, I, can, uh, I can hit the highlights of that. Okay, this first church is the Messianic Kingdom Church. This is not our church for the day. Nobody's been a kingdom disciple in the gospel of the kingdom for almost 2,000 years. And some people you share this with, I'm sure you're going, they're going to roll over in their graves. They just can't imagine the concept, what I'm talking about here. This church will become... will revived again when Elijah it is uh, I have to check these diagram links too because that, that, see that old photo, uh, photo bucket link I don't think that's going to work okay so I have to check that okay where, where the blue begins it's the diagram that I just showed you anyway number 309 from my book okay coming to restore all things as the prophet of Acts 
3, 22 through 23, rebuilding the temple. That's when the temple of David gets rebuilt. The tabernacle of David is going to be restored in Jerusalem. They're going to rebuild the kingdom. Elijah's going to see to it. David's going to sit there. Start at Ezekiel 34, start at verse 23. And he's going to rule right up at the time he gets cut off. 68 weeks to go. So anyway, Kingdom Bride Church, these are the verses. Gathered through the gospel of the kingdom, the Lord is betrothing the bride. You see the Lord God's promise right there? He's going to betroth them right there. Okay, the church is based in Jerusalem. You ever wonder why Paul's letters are written to the Romans, they're written to the um, Corinthians, Thessalonians, but Peter and John and James books all have their name on them. You don't see one book in the Bible named after the Apostle Paul. You know why you ever wonder about that? The reason is because the church of Peter, John, and James was in Jerusalem. They couldn't all name them Hebrews, now could they? No. So that's why they had their name put on them. Paul was written, written writing to a church that was spread around the, all, the entire known world. The book of Romans is the most important book. Whenever you first get saved, the book of Romans is the most powerful book. That's what you're going to grow on the most. You're not going to be able to understand as much about Ephesians and Colossians, the prison epistles, because that's going to come later. When you get more mature, then the Ephesians and Colossians are going to be your most favorite books, like they are mine. When you first begin, though, it's going to be Romans. Because Paul felt like that if he could conquer the Romans, he could conquer the entire world. Because they were the, the kings at that time. They were the occupiers of Israel. They occupied everything. The kingdom spread across the, the known world at that time. That's why he put so much work, dedication, into the book of Romans. Okay, so the, the, they are the bride. They're called the bride. Guess how many times Paul uses the word nymphy, the Greek in all of his letters, zero, we're not the bride. He calls us the body of Christ over and over and over and over again. Some people don't know the difference between the bride and the body. Two different administrations. Their church is based in Jerusalem. They're destined to become a kingdom of priests, the holy nation, a chosen race. This includes a kingdom of God that's on earth as it is in heaven continues to be under Mosaic law until heaven and earth passes away. Go and read Christ's words right there. Don't think that I came to abolish the law. I came. I did not come to abolish the law but to fulfill. Until heaven and earth pass away. Not the smallest dot is going to be taken from the law. And that's why James says right there James 2.10 is that if you keep the whole law and you're guilty in one point you're guilty of all. That's not talking to you. It's talking to the kingdom bride that's going to live from Hebrews to the end of the age, you see. That period has not even started yet. And some are trying to end the age now because they're confused. They don't know the difference between Christ. This is Christ's water ministry right here. Christ came in water and blood, not water only, but water and in blood. For well, there are three that testify, the spirit, the water, and the blood. And the three are into the one. Or three into the one are if you use the Wycliffe Bible. Okay, so they continue to be under Mosaic law. Peter and John and James had to continue observing the Passover, for example. That has nothing to do with us. Nothing. Even though a lot of people proclaim it and profess it and they do it. It has nothing to do with us. They're mixing kingdom doctrine with grace doctrine they don't know the difference kingdom disciples are justified by works and not by faith alone the kingdom church was started by john the baptist he came first christ came second disciples came third father son and holy spirit that's the diagram that i just showed you kingdom disciples re receive three baptisms you have people in acts 19 is a perfect example they have only the baptism of john they hadn't even heard of the Holy Spirit. They hadn't heard of Christ or the Holy Spirit. Paul tells them about Jesus Christ. They're baptized in the name of Jesus. He lays hands on them. They're baptized in the name of the Holy Spirit. Three separate baptisms for kingdom disciples. 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They can walk around having one and not the other two. Or they can have two and not have the third one. Members of the kingdom bride do not have eternal security. They must endure to the end. Go read. They must endure to the end. Plenty of examples in early Acts where, they, where people just fall dead. Members, yeah, they do not have uh, security. Kingdom disciples must believe and be baptized in water. There are ex uh, exceptions. Cornelius was an example. He should have been baptized with, in water, but it fell on him. That confuses a lot of people, but here's the deal. Paul was about to be submitting the gospel that we preach today. Peter, John, and James didn't even know about the gospel of the grace of God. So, whenever Peter went to Cornelius, God used that as an example. He showed Cornelius being baptized without being baptized in water. Because that's what the testimony that was going to be used. Peter was going to stand up in the assembly in Jerusalem in 50 AD, that famous meeting. And he's going to say, hey, James is going to agree and then Paul's, uh, Peter's going to agree. The last time Peter's name is used in the book of Acts is going to be in Acts 15, 14. He's never mentioned again in the book of Acts. That's the end of the kingdom part because the transitional book is going to then focus on Paul. And Paul goes to the Israel, the Jews first. It's right there in, in Romans. During that period, it was before the close of Acts. But you're not going to find that in other books. You're not going to find it in any books that are written later because Paul stopped going to the Jew first and then to the, the, the Gentiles after about 60, 61 AD at the close of the book of Acts. Acts 28, 28. He's going strictly to the Gentiles after that point. He got a sour taste in his mouth from the Jews because they'd been beating on him and stuff. They didn't understand what was going on. They, not, not, not just that. Disciples. Kingdom disciples. Zealous for the law. They're still under the law. So here's Paul telling them that they don't have to be circumcised. They took them out and tried to kill them more than once. They left Paul under a pile of stones because they thought he was dead. Paul gets up, shakes himself off, and walks back into the city. That's what you have. That's the attitude that you're supposed to have. So they three times I got banned, and I, God said was telling me, you don't go to that website. You don't go to that website. You don't go to website. Now we'll see what happens with this one. But this is a grace-centered um, website. And I'm going to tippy-toe around. And I hope they don't ban me from there either. But I felt kind of like Paul in that sense. Okay, they have to um, they have to believe and be baptized. And then the kingdom church addressed by Christ on the earth. Peter, John, and James, 12 tr tribes dispersed. So Jesus Christ, Christ is speaking to the kingdom church. He's speaking when he's, he's speaking through to the church through the disciples, right? It's an important thing to realize. Now, the, this bottom part, that's the kingdom church. Now, this is our church. This is our mystery church of today described only in the Pauline epistles. We shall be caught up in the, um, to the Lord, and there's an article about this down below. When the thousand years day of the Lord has come, or begins. It's about to begin. First Thessalonians 5 is what I should have quoted there. This is uh, First Thessalonians 16. All oh, this is about the trumpet. Okay. Oh, here, here it is right here. When the day of the Lord begins. Nobody else in the whole Bible sees how the day of the Lord begins. Except for Paul. God didn't show anybody in the Bible how the, the day of the Lord begins. He shows all of them in the Old Testament how it ends. He shows Daniel like halfway through until the end and gives him the weeks and things. But nobody else did he show how it started. Do you know why? Because God had to hide inside of himself the fact, the facts about our gospel of Christ shed blood. He had to hide in about our church that we're going to judge the world and the angels. That he's going to glorify us. That he's going to save us through the foolishness of a message preached. There's no Hebrew or Aramaic word in the Old Testament translated into gospel even one time. Nobody was saved by obeying a gospel in the Old Testament. Jews have no concept of it. Sons of Israel, Old Testament, no concept of it at all. 
And I'm going to, um, if I have time, I'm going to, when I go through the articles, I'm going to show you that. That's one of the points that I make that I've practiced in the past. If you want to see, I'll go ahead and say it now that I've talked about it, the, a blank stare on a man's face. Then go to a practicing Jew and ask him about going to heaven. Ask him about the afterlife and going to heaven. We're, you know, we're, Because he, he's just going to look at you and think that you're out of your freaking mind. That's not the plan that Israel has in heaven. They go down into Sheol and they get raised on the last day and brought into the land of Israel. The, cons, the concepts, Christian concepts we have through the ministry of the Apostle Paul, unprecedented in the Bible. But people put these things into the prophet's mouth. They put it into their mind whenever they should not be, be there. They're not there. They're definitely not there. But people want to believe that they're there. And they're not. The things that, that are tied together properly, the things that, because we are in the Old Testament, but they didn't know it. Paul has to go back and say, you are here, we are there, as it is written back here. Then you can say, ah, we are in there. But the people reading the scriptures at that time could not see us. They, God had to reveal these things to Paul so Paul could then show us the, where we are in the Old Testament. Okay, so... And we now know that this thousand years is just a symbolic term. I mean, it's a, it's a euphemism, Greek euphemism. It's only used in Second Peter and Revelation, and it means so long as it takes. You ever told somebody, man, that could take a thousand years? That, you don't mean a literal thousand years, do you? That, that's the, not the literal meaning of the phrase either. And you see the as in there, like, when it, like in uh, where it says that... A day to the Lord is as a thousand years. You see translators putting the as in there because th this is a euphemism. It's not exactly what it means, even though the literal term is a thousand in the Greek. That's not what it means. Okay, We now know that the, the in between the black star coming now that it's about to do and then when it comes again at the end of the age is 3,600 years. But that's how long it's going to take to fulfill all the words of the prophets. I write that in detail in an article that's down below. This, I, I, I wish, whenever I was a young Christian, that somebody had put something like this together for me so I could go through it and check the links and verify, right? And then challenge and say, hey, what about this? What about this? Because if there's things I can't see yet, I'm going to say, this looks wrong. And then I'm going to be able to challenge. You can do that. You can quote me and say, hey, what about this? What about that? That's what creates the opportunity for clarifying statements. And then when I give you the clarifying statements, you go, Oh, let's get crazy opportunity, an open door so that you can go through and you can see behind that thing you couldn't see behind before. I really would have wished that somebody would have done this, gone forward and fixed all the doctrine, gave me the opportunity. And if there's anybody that's out there, you can find that something wrong in one of these posts. This, this post was written the first time and posted back in 2004, more than 15 years ago. And there's nothing that I would change about it. Even today, if there's anything, this is a challenge to the, the YouTube guys. You guys that are watching me right now, if any of you can find one mistake in any of these posts, any of them, you know, this is the second one. If you can find one mistake and you can, you write a convincing ar argument to me, you're going to support it with scripture, right? You can put, you can even put in a comment, but I would rather you write me at the website, tarot at tarot. 03.com uh, and okay if you're able to do that and you force me to come and change one thing about any of this then you're going to get a free subscription not just a free newsletter subscription the $25 two bucks a month you're going to get a tutor you're going to have me as your tutor and it's going to be free but that's how much it is worth to me to have somebody pull the splinter out of my eye I'm serious dead serious about that some people they act like they want to get angry at me because we have a disagreement. No, that's an opportunity to learn. And whenever you hold fixed in the face of all this evidence and you don't have no reply, right? then you're just going to believe agreeing to disagree. That's a coward's way out. That means there's something that you, if you can't support what you believe, then you need to work a little bit harder. 
Because this, whenever we go through the, this veil that we're about to go through, and we're standing in heaven, look at each other. This stuff's going to matter. It's going to matter a lot. It's going to affect the way that our garments are shaped, the way the jewels in our ephods, our chest plates are, the the stone in our staff, the stones in our crown, the rings on our fingers, whether it's they are golden or whether they're silver or copper, whether they have big stones or whether it's a chunk of glass or a chunk of coal. And your garment's going to be beautiful white or it's going to be smoky because of the way that we are dispensing doctrine to our brethren. The way the things that we're accepting is truth. Extremely important. I take this very, very seriously. And you, this, like I said, this was done 15 years ago and there's nothing that I want to change. Well, there's some picture links, but that doesn't count. I'm talking about the doctrinal part. Okay? So where was I? Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll try to remember to change this link right here because I know that photo bucket to the one that I just I had, had to even open up a new photo bucket. Not photo bucket. Don't use photo bucket. Those guys are jerks. I was using them 15 years ago. There's a new one. The, the people that I use now, way better. Um, that's part of the reason that I've been so busy is just setting up accounts and doing the things and now I've got to update to this and t two newsletter pro programs and I had my um, my last two root canals on Saturday and I'm be I've been on these antibiotics because of the scheduling. So what she scheduled me, they, and they give me another bottle of antibiotics and I've been on antibiotics now for the last couple of months off and on and it's tearing up what's in my 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 I'm taking a handful of probiotics and I still wind up having issues and, and lacking energy. My body can't process the food because my body's so full of antibiotics to make sure that I don't get the bacterial infection back. So I'm, I'm ha having a little bit of difficulty, but I'm doing the best that I can. And um, I think God's using this to inspire me a little bit. Sometimes you got to drag you through the mud a little bit let, and let people abuse you a little bit, knock you around like these websites have been doing. To, um, I think what God does sometimes is He just shakes the the crap out of you. He bounces you up and down. I I, I did a face plant out here in the middle of the road, what, what, three weeks ago, trying to run across the street from the dentist's office after I got surgery, and then the guy on the kid on that bike, and then it looked like that I was in in a boxing match with Rocky Balboa for about ten rounds. But God's doing this. Because he is going to shake every single thing until only the things that he puts inside you remain. That's what he does. That's what he did with me over as I was growing up to see these things right here too. Persecution, like like if I mean, if I just, if I even started to try to tell you about it, you'd have to turn this off because it, it's a just I don't know. It's a really long story, and you can hardly believe that a person could be used, abused, betrayed, and everything. And uh, relationships and in businesses and, every, and all that stuff. But what God was doing is he was putting my attention on him and taking it away from these other things. You know, and whenever something came between me and him, then he would destroy that thing so that I would focus on him. And that's what it's about. And now I'm glad that he, that's what he did. I mean, I was a little bit frustrated and angry about these bannings and things, but now I realize that's, that's, that's not where he wanted me to go. And he sent me to this other place. So anyway, let me keep on going. This is us, the Grace Body Mystery Church. That's us. Distinguished from the, the Kingdom Bride, the okay? Kingdom Bride Church. You're, whenever you go through all of these, you're going to find number four is the opposing doctrinal precept teaching this church doctrine. Number five opposing okay now this is about us okay we're gathered through the obedience of Paul's word of the cross gospel message not the gospel kingdom our mystery church was not seen by the Old Testament prophets Peter's church was seen I'm gonna make you a kingdom of priests John the Baptist came Christ came the king they killed the king to stop the kingdom that's the whole plan that God set but in order for the devil to take the bait the devil had to think this was the only pro program the only kingdom dispensation that the Old Testament was the Old Testament Saints the New Testament was these kingdom 
So what did he do? The same thing he did to Adam. Kill him. That's what he did. But if Satan would have known about this, the beast, the devil, if they'd have known, they wouldn't have crucified him. 1 Corinthians 2, no, yeah, 2, start at verse 6. If they would have known, they didn't understand it, that this was happening. But if they had understand it, they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have, God's trap wouldn't have worked. Basically is what it means. Okay, so our mystery church was not seen, it was hidden in God. That's what the mystery is all about. The grace churches are all around the known world. Remember, Peter's church is centered in Jerusalem. Destined to judge the world and the angels. I'm going to have to change this diagram. Our citizenship is in heaven. And if, uh, what was I was quoting the other day? Second, Second Timothy 4, 18. That we're going to be delivered to his heavenly kingdom. Israel doesn't even know anything about what that even means. They're going to be resurrected and bled into the land of Israel on the earth. We are under grace and not under law. Peter, John, and James, the Old Testament saints, are all under the law. Our church is justified by faith apart from works. No water baptisms, no landing, laying of the hands with the Holy Spirit, none of that. We're baptized with the Holy Spirit the moment we believe. We are baptized into Christ's body the moment we believe. We're baptized into his death, burial, and resurrection. We're seated in the heavenly places with him. If you read Ephesians 2, do I have it pulled up here? Ephesians 2, start at 4 and go to 7. You're going to see that we are seated with him, with Jesus Christ, in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I'll be going into that after the baptisms, the next, well, the two weeks after that, the differences between Jesus Christ and Christ Jesus. And somebody out there is, is, is going to be accusing me of blasphemy already because they think that Christ Jesus and Jesus Christ are interchangeable and they're the same, and they're not. You have Jesus Christ and Christ Jesus mentioned in the same verse written by Paul because Paul knows the difference, I know the difference, and I'm hoping that you guys are going to learn the difference too. Christ Jesus is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit as a man, a heavenly man. Heaven. My Father art in heaven. Where do you think he got his name? Heaven of Genesis 1.1. Break the word into the Father and the Holy Spirit. You have a spirit witness and you have a water witness. The power from on high overshadows the Holy Spirit. The Son is begotten. The place where they overlap. Read Luke 1.35 and you'll see that's exactly the way that Christ was begotten in the womb of Mary. No DNA from Mary, none from Joseph. Conceived of the Holy Spirit. Matthew 1, 18 and 20. You can see, he's not like us. But we are made in his image now, and we are being raised and seated in the heavenly places with Jesus Christ in Christ Jesus. There are no promises like anything like that for the Old Testament saints. There's none like that for Peter, John, and James either until after they go through the marriage supper of the Lamb. Revelation 19, start at verse 5. But they have to come by works. That's what I'm about to be about, uh, telling you about here. Okay, we're justified by faith apart from works. Our mystery church started with Paul on the road to Damascus. Many, many people want to start, especially among dispensationalists. Some people looking at this are going to say, man, this guy's a dispensationalist. No. I went to ChristianForums.com to argue against dispensationalists. There's so many things that the dispensies are off on. They're, they're, they're good on some things. They're dead wrong on some things, too. There's actually not another person... That sees the three witnesses. Believe me, every Saturday morning for years, my job was to look for somebody who was ahead of me on this so I could learn from them. I never found anybody. Okay? Started with Paul. Rode to Damascus. He's the first member to be raised, to be saved by God's grace through faith apart from works. Boom. Saved. Because God said so. On the road to Damascus. Seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Boom. Number one. First one. He preached... And that's what Paul is saying, that you might have a thousand tutors, but in Christ Jesus, that he became our Father in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of truth that was given to him by Christ through a revelation, Galatians 1, start 11. Okay. Then the brethren received only one baptism. We receive only one baptism. That's what it says right here. 
One Lord, one faith, one baptism. The gospel of the kingdom have three. Once you realize that they're different, then you can separate the four baptisms. Three kingdom, one for us. And you know exactly what this is, and you know exactly what it is not. It is not water baptism. That's John's baptism for the forgiveness of sins. Our sins are forgiven by obedience of faith. God gives us forgiveness. He gives us eternal life as a free gift, as a, the gift of, of, of eternal life. Gift. Because we obeyed the gospel. Okay. Click on the links. It's a good, just going through this and clicking on these links is going to be a great Bible study. Okay, then um, the members of the body have eternal security in Christ Jesus. Eternal security. Our lives are hidden with Christ in God. That verse right there. That's not true for the kingdom disciples. They can screw up. They can sin. They can go run with the devil and then they're not saved anymore. They have to keep the law. And we are special because God says we're special. The brethren are saved by believing the gospel without adding works. This mystery church is addressed by Paul only in the scriptures. So whenever you do a, compar a comparison, comparative analysis, with these and these, you're going to see they have opposing doctrinal precepts. And anything taught in the Bible that has opposing, opposing doctrinal precepts cannot be the same thing. Every single one of these are, is opposing. That's how this was put together. That's kind of the, the spiritual genius part of it. When you go through it, then just going through this post can help you to see our church and separate it from Peter's church and then look at your own church doctrine and say, wait a minute, there's things that's off here. Then you go on Wednesdays and you're talking to your minister about it, you're going to find out real quick if they're graced, if they're members of Christ's body that just are out of fellowship because they have these things wrong, or if you're in a den of of members of the body of the Antichrist that just don't know it. You're, you will know by the doctrine. You're going to have to do this for a while before you can see the pattern, but they're going to give themselves away in the things they say and in the things they never say over a period of time. Okay, so in summary, or in conclusion, um, only church number two is active today. Nobody has been added to the kingdom church we have to change that link too. That goes back to ChristianForums.com. No, the U.S. Message Board. For almost 2,000 years, the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom, number one, has no power today. But Elijah will pick up the Holy Spirit baton and begin heralding that gospel message to Israel only. I probably need a comma in there. Like John the Baptist, when he returns to restore all things. Do you see two different bride and body churches in the New Testament or just one? Good luck in the debate. That's how, you know, I like to lay out my case, give a little summary, conclusion, ask a question. If you, when you read the, the, um, my book, The Mystery Explained, good luck finding a question. Because questions divide your listening audience. If you're writing a thesis paper, you want to eliminate all your, your uh, questions and turn them into affirmative statements going one direction or another. Whenever you ask a question, you divide your group, but that's why you ask it at the when you start a debate, because you want to divide your group. It's done deliberately, right here, because some are going to answer this question one way and some are going to answer it another, right? So I'm going to have advocates and I'm going to have adversaries in the debate. And I welcome you guys to go up there and uh, to uh, this link right here, gracecenter.com. Make sure you read all the rules. They have a lot of rules at these boards. You can easily get banned, and I've been a member there 15 years, and I should have checked the rules on these other ones. Apparently, posting too many links or answering too many posts too close together or whatever is getting me in trouble. So I'm going to be tippy-toeing around this one anyway. Okay, so then, Mystery Report News. Some of this I've already told you. A, a series of events taking place. Okay, this is where uh, I got banned. See, I got banned again, and I actually edited this. This is a longer story because I was adding to it throughout the week. You have been banned. Spam. Call me a spammer. And uh, I looked up the definition. I know what it is, but, you know, just to see, and there's no, absolutely no way that I did anything like that. So this is a little screenshot. If you've never been to a Bible form before, this is kind of an inviting, you know, so that you have a little bit of, this is what it looks like. This is my post, my first post. This is my second post. They were 
worked on here today. They were just bumped. I edited them, and then I bumped the. Uh, I wrote a little message to the moderator. The funny thing about this board is the rules, because see what it says the rules. You're going to read that before you post anything. Make sure you do that. But the rules say if there's already a topic on this, don't start a new one. So then I go and I, I say, okay, well, I don't want to break any rules. So I went back to my post 2006. Same topic, same stuff. They had, apparently whenever these posts don't get read for a number of 120 days or a year or something, what they do is they just cut the content from the second half out. So only the top part of my post was showing there. But some boards don't let you even edit. The U.S. Message Board was one of them. I'm not posting there anymore either. You, can, you only have 18 hours to edit a post. After that, it stays the same. This place allows you to edit one from more than a decade ago, 13 years ago that I wrote this. So they're both popped to the, bo the, the board, and you can join there. I give you the links, make everything easy for you, and you can go to the, the theology section. You can see the links, Christian Forums Theology, and that's where you can click and read my opening posts here, and then you can reply. Then I'm going to go next week... This is what I did with this post right here last week when I made this report. This, this gospel of the kingdom was already there. I mean, this uh, two gospels was already there. Problem is, I got banned. So that inhibited me from doing what I needed to do. I'm working on the Black Star stuff. I'm working on updating the site and doing that. Finally, I get back over here to yesterday. Monday is my hard work day to get this newsletter ready. For, I, I add to this newsletter every day, but compiling and formatting and do, getting it all finalized is Monday. That's my Monday work that I did yesterday. I'm, Monday night, last night, I was still pulling my hair out trying to get all these things together and did not have this that I wanted to show you. Because I worked all day yesterday on ChristianForms.net website. I, I posted these posts back to back and they banned me before I even... It's just amazing. Some of the work that I was doing yesterday down in this newsletter was from the helping people that were on that website and as I'm helping people moderators banning me in the middle of my reply they they banned me so I had to start it all over this morning I've been up since early this morning in the future whenever all this is set up I'm having difficulty making the transition especially with my, my because I'm kind of beat down with my um, surgeries and stuff but this is going to get easier for me um, my significant other, Kelly, she was telling me, you know, you're just working yourself way too hard. She's looking at my face. She's going, you're, you can't, you can't keep doing this. But I was, that's why I'm sharing it with you. Cause I just had to share it with her before she left. And, um, I had to let her know that this is going to get easier. We're going to get into routine and then it's not, I'm not going to get banned three times. I'm not going to, I'm going to be able to have the Monday report done earlier in the day. Not, not nine or ten or eleven at night and then um, I'm going to be able to get up on Tuesday morning and finalize this uh, especially David send me those articles like new does David is my new and he's sending me articles to share with you guys from the Christian perspective but if you don't send them to me then I have to go do that too on top of doing all this other stuff so I greatly greatly appreciate new I'm not kidding you that that, that he helps me so much and, and um, I haven't even probably mentioned him for a couple of years or something, but um, he is really, really my partner, and I appreciate it very, very much. And Dave has volunteered to do this part. This was the reason. I was thinking about doing this earlier, but then David wrote me and said, you know what, you really need to do this. And I go, man, I've been thinking about that already. So I asked him before I agreed to do it, because this is a lot of work. So I, are you going to help me like New helps me? Because if I was in the chat room back in 2012, Terrell's research group, we were trying to come up with what to do. And if it was just going to be me running the website and me putting together all the articles for the week and me doing the, um, the putting the newsletters together and me keeping up with a book, if it was just going to be me doing that, I wouldn't have done I, There was just no way I could have ever done it. Had to have Bill and had to have New. I wish we had more. There were more people that were helping at the beginning. Uh, Michael Owens was there. If um, any of you were back, I know this John, the first subscriber here to this program, he was there. He, he knows what it was like there. But that, So to David, I really need you to 
over the weekends put together the latest information from the Christian perspective, the things that you feel, just like New does. The, he does the earth changes, you know, the things that you see, he sends me from your perspective. And, you know, we, have, we the, the way things start off is kind of rocky and it's like starting a new business, like starting a new, a new anything. You know, things are going to hit the road. You're going to hit bumps and grinds and stops and have roadblocks. And that's just the way that it is. But by doing this week after week after week after week, you get into a pattern and then everything is going to smooth out and become easier. Okay, so if this is this is the format. This is the form that I'm going to try to stick with right here. And all you guys are welcome to go over there. And I do not need any help. It's like it's like Elijah and the priest of Baal. I can take on everybody. Could do that back then, back 2004, no problem. So it's not like I don't want you to think that I'm soliciting you to say, "Oh yeah, good job." You know, I'm not looking for a pep rallies on my posts or you know, a bunch of thumbs. I don't need that. I mean, I just want you to be honest, just like I am. You click on it, you agree with something, then you agree, and if you don't agree, you don't. You, you don't post your opposing views if you don't agree. That's perfectly fine. If you see anything off, I'm not kidding you. God turns on the light, then boom. I'm going to be extremely grateful for doing that. You're also going to see me writing on these other posts. I'm not going to just, I'm not kidding you. I can go down this post and answer all these questions. It'll be by tarot, by tarot, by tarot. But that's what I did on that other. And they banned me for it like I'm, like I'm spamming or something. So I'm, so um, I'm going to be working a little bit slower on this guy, on, on this stuff right here. And you won't see me here on Wednesdays and Thursdays. Because that's Black Star Day, right? Okay. So everything I want to share with you, you can you can register. Just, just click right there. It's, I already got the link for you right here. This, this particular website is connected to a Grace Center magazine. And if you just go to their website, you can't even see where to register. I had to hunt around and look and scratch my head and go, what's going on here? And then finally, I did a search, a, a uh, advanced search, and then it, it pulled up. And there it is right there. Okay, so then um, chat room. Okay, now, those of you that just want to get your hands on these newsletters, this is an extremely valuable document. Every one of them are. They help, they're going to help you to straighten out your doctrine. And you can just take the Dropbox folder link. Say everybody on this list, Jonathan, David, Kathy, Dr. Laura, Kenna, Deborah. That's Dr. Deborah, too. And then um, Scott. They've got the Dropbox folder link where this newsletter is going to be uploaded to. They keep the link to themselves. I give that to you in the notification email. You can access all the newsletters in it. Past, there's only one in there right now, but this second one, and then every week you're going to get another one. And it's going to go in sequential order. Okay. Now, each individual newsletter, you can click on the link, right, and download the newsletter. And then... Take that newsletter and send it as an attachment. Attach it to your email and send it to your friends. Send it to your family. Send it to whoever you want to. That's how we're going to get more subscribers. Happy for you to do that. Just keep that Dropbox folder link to yourself. That's proprietary property of Terrell03.com. Okay. So, um, and so this is where, this is the point that um, this John's going to be happy about right here. What is this? In the old days, then this was Terrell's Research Group, right up here. We had 365, we got it up to 365 men members and 65 administrators. Okay, now when you are a member, whenever you register, then in, for the, if you just want to have the newsletter, then you're going to get one of these every week. Okay. And you read them, and it's all good and everything. You, the premium, just like a uh, newsletter, um, Black Star newsletter program, and then you have the survival group program, that's $50 per year. So if you're a $50 subscriber, then you're, part of your benefit package is you get to come here every Tuesday night from 7 to 9. Now, that's kind of how the research group began back in 2011 before there was ever even a newsletter program. And it would be me, and it would be 
three or four or five people. That's how that's how this is going to start. I'm sure this is how it's going to start. And then as we grow, more and more people get excited about this. Think about all the Black Star radio shows that I've done over the years. But I haven't done that many for The Mystery Explained yet. But now I'm going to be doing both. Actively, aggressively, especially now that my health, I mean, I'm not there yet. But as my health is, gets better, then I'm going, to want, I'm going to have more energy to do more. And I'm going to be able to, um, especially if I have assistance from others helping me. Dave's helping me. News helping me, right? Delilah's helping me with diagrams and things. And uh, Mark's helping me, uh, Project Astronomer, Jim, right? Then it could be that this chat room becomes 24 hours. If once, once we have enough people and then people that are retired, people that stay home all day, um, that's just what they do. They're looking for an activity. They, they want to be an administrator, a moderator. As soon as we have a moderator, three moderators, you're going to have your night owls and you're going to have your morning people. Your night owls are moderated at night. And they're going to keep passing the torch and keeping the room open. And up here at the top, you see, here's the website. And these bitlies, that is to the online Bible. And this is to the, the YouTube channel, the Christian YouTube channel. I'm trying to get another link there, but apparently I only, can only have three with this particular account that I have. But this is, it enables you to go to this, the New American Standard Bible that I use online. Why, and so while we're doing our deliberations, just click on it and go. And I'm um, wanting to get the link there to take us over to the forum too, but I haven't been able to do that yet. But anyway, it's just me here. You can see my name, 03.com, 03.com. All right. You can't get that name in a lot of places because it's called spam. So I was going, I, I couldn't do it for my regular name because I have an old account there. And I don't want to use the old account. I want something brand new. So this is what I'm doing for right now. That's my name. You got come in whenever you go to this. Um, you're going to have all the instructions in your notification email, just like I showed you the link. Or you can go register at the um, Christian website, uh, the forums. You're going to have a link too. Just click on it. You're going to be able to register, and then you're going to be able to add my name, Terrell zero three. Just add me. And then you're going to be able to use this is the name of the room. Say, I'm a follower. Whenever you get here, you're going to be a follower. And then whenever you turn on, you're going to have a chat messaging system, a messenger, you know, like, uh, you know, like Skype or anybody else. And then you're going to follow this room. It'll say follow here. You click on it and it's going to show up right there. So it makes coming and going in for the room that much easier. And whenever you come to the room, you can write. You can type here. Um, some people can post links. Some can't post links. There's going to be rules. There's no rule set right now. But what we don't need is a bunch of spammers, a bunch of, you know, with every board this happens. I've done this for years. I've got a lot of experience running my own room here. you got people that just run in and want to paste their advertising and things like that. They can't do it. We're, they could at this moment, but we're going to set it up so they can't. And there's just haters that are atheists and all kinds of things. And they come into a Christian room and then they try to, you know, spread their hate and stuff. So, especially when there's a few members, we may have a um, password. And the password is also in your notification email, but it says if we use one. Because I really prefer not to use one. Because... More people that use this message board will see the room. They'll come in. They'll listen. They'll go, hey, man, this is good stuff. And then they'll become subscribers, supporters of the research. That's the idea, the way that it goes. So 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Time tonight, this is where I'm going to be. You can join us. The um, Those who are on this list, they already have the information. They already have the information. Oh, yeah, right here. They already have the information, so they'll be able to come. And then my plan is to record our two-hour session. Everything that's said, so you guys should all realize that everything. It's a G-rated room, you know, it's religious things. And then I'll edit that if it's needed, and then upload that to um, the YouTube channel. But that's going to be private. 
So you're going to get these updates. You're going to get my um, new, my reports like the one for Bonnie that was made, the ones for Dina. Those are all put on this channel for you guys. The only ones that are going to be private, and you have to understand, is that our personal conversations in the room, they're not going to be shared with the whole planet. They're going to be shared with other members, other people that have these newsletters. And I'm not even going to show the link to the YouTube. It's going to say link, and it's going to have the link embedded. Okay, so it's it's a special benefit for people that subscribe to the program, and because you know I want it to be a great program, and I want you to have benefits. You're helping to support the program, right? Well, you should have a benefit for that, and that I'm trying to build the best program possible. Okay, I'm looking at the time. We're not going to be able to go through a lot. The two Gospels of the New Testament. You see, these are my clarifying statements, my opening post from last week. Next week, guess what's going to be here? My clarifying statements? The two churches of the New Testament. Everybody's got an opportunity to argue against me all week long and then I'm going to be able to put their words right here and then give you my clarifying statements, my return argument. Once you see, the, you, those of you that are catching on to what I'm trying to show you, you might have the same argument and then you're going to get your answer right here. Now, generally, I'm going. this section is going to have five or six or seven or eight or nine or ten of these with diagrams showing you this shows you how the three how the Bible is living how it has a spirit soul and a body just like the tabernacle of Moses in the temple there's a lot in this one diagram all right but this particular week because I'm setting everything up and I'm getting banned I'm going, this, this is the only one that's right here so this is my answer to Dan and there's just one of them this week that's the way it goes there's a lot more down below okay, this Featured article here is John writing me. John's known me for a long time. He used to follow me over at Revolution Radio when I used to do radio shows there every week. And um, had to stop that. just wasn't enough time. I didn't, didn't see a benefit. Nighthawk was on my tail all the time. So I, I had to stop. This John. Okay. So um, this is what he wrote. This is my reply. Not going to be able to go through everything. But... This is the guy, the fellow right here. He's my helper already, and he's the one that um that down that downloaded my radio shows from 2012, and he's he's uh, in the process of editing them and adding them. So as the weeks go by, I'll probably send me one a week, whatever he has time to do, and then I'll add it to the radio section in this newsletter for you guys. And ChristianForums.com no longer there. So the singularity problem, and this was for Bonnie. This was the one you see. Now these kind of videos, they're not numbered. The video I'm making now, right now, it's going to be numbered zero, zero two. And you would, if you were brand new, coming to my channel, and you wanted to follow the two gospels, the two churches, I'm laying a breadcrumb trail here for you to do that. Next week is going to be the four baptisms, the differences between God and my Father right in heaven. The difference between Jesus Christ and Christ Jesus, and then how the mystery diagrams work, and that we're going to be primed and ready. I may even go through those two other videos that you see in the introduction section at the website, uh, line by line, you know, give you a little commentary like I did above, uh, because those are the ones that were chosen over the years that seem to help the people um, that were following the breadcrumb trail, as I would, as I was trying to explain. Singularity problem, the singularity issue is not a problem the what this is going to boil down to is and I've, I've written to Dave I've given you guys my commentary in that video so I don't really have to go through all that right okay I mean these are singularities God is a singularity the room of the word is heaven of Genesis 1 1 that's the Father Son and the Holy Spirit that's the man the man is the heavens heaven and earth that's a man too so when Paul talks about there's one um, intercessor. There's one mediator, I should say. 1 Timothy 2.5. One God and one mediator between God and men. The man Christ Jesus. He's not talking about Jesus Christ. The man, the, the, and as if Jesus Christ is a man. Because he's not. He's the son of God. He's talking about Christ Jesus. The heavenly man. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So these three witnesses testify. Guess who of these three witnesses testifies for the original singularity? In every single case, it's the blood witness. 
right here. That's why the Son testifies for the Word. The Father gives all the power of authority to judge to the Son because the Son is eventually going to become the Word again. The Father and the Holy Spirit are going to be no more. And people think that's blasphemy. But it's true. Where was the Father and the Holy Spirit whenever there was only the Word? He was in the, They didn't even exist. The Son didn't exist. Those three witnesses only exist because the Word had to be sacrificed into the Father and the Holy Spirit to overlap, to beget the Son. Just like heaven was begotten in Genesis 1.8. Same thing. The water's above, the water's below. Both of these are waters, spiritual waters, earthly waters. Okay? So, what you get is in the original video. This is as long as this report, if I remember right. Line by line. But then everything is recorded in the weekly newsletter. So, you, so you're busy. You're working. You don't have time. Every Tuesday afternoon between 12 and 6, then you can download this newsletter. And then you have everything all in one place. Every video report, all of my commentary, the links to go to this and that. The links. There's no other place that I can think of that where the links to my 2012 radio shows are going to be posted except for in this newsletter series. And here's um, um, the one for Dina, and there's the video that was made. And Dina, I still have, I think, two more of yours. The way that you guys are going to get answers is by sending me the questions. Right? Send me the questions. Keep them coming. And then... Uh, Sending them on Wednesday is not going to be, I mean, it might sit there a while. If you're sending them to me over the weekend, that's what I can work on them, and then on Mondays particularly. That's getting them ready while I'm getting this newsletter ready. Over the weekend, on a Friday, Saturday, and a Sunday, that's the best days to send that, this type of information because then I have time to consider everything and uh, make you a good, thoughtful reply, make you a video and everything. Send it on Wednesday, and it's going to set and set and set and set. Until I can finally get to it on the weekend. It's a pretty good diagram where this is the Old Testament. The Old Testament prophets, boom, they can see over here really good. They can tell you exactly what's going to happen over here, but they don't see anything inside of here. This is a mystery period. It began with Paul and it ends with us being taken. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. Okay, and there's the first um, Corinthians. And you know, I was a little more critical of uh, Dr. Kim here. And um, I'm a little, you know, I'm going to be critical about things because I'm very, very precise. Grace doctrine is my strongest suit. And that broken doctrine hurts people. And so getting your doctrine right, getting it exactly right, is very important. So... Whenever you send me something like this, then you need to realize that m my statements are about Dr. Kim's interpretations, about the way that he's seeing things spiritually. It's not about the guy himself. I can tell. Dina sent me enough of his videos, and I've watched enough of them to know that he's a real smart guy. He, he, he loves God, and he's, doing the, he's showing us what he can see. There's just some things that, he's, that we're going to disagree on, and then if... Uh, we both love God's word, right? We both love God. We can we can debate things back and forth. Scripture says there must be factions among you so that those who are approved may become evident. So he's going to give his side in this video and I'm going to I'm going to go in my side. The only way that I could quote him, I much prefer you send me a a link to a text. I mean to text to a article that he wrote because then I can quote it, paste it and answer it. Whenever you send me a video, it makes it much, much more difficult. I'm a really good reader, a very fast speed reader. You can give me a document, I can read it very quickly. When you give me a video and it takes an, it's an hour and 15 minute long video, guess what? It takes me just like everybody else, an hour and 15 minutes to go through the video. So my, abil my abilities are compromised to go through the keyword as I'm reading Something that goes on in my mind of keywording documents, like the 9-11 Commission report and the scriptures and everything. And that's what I'm doing when I'm reading something. It cannot do the same thing. 
I know for many, many people, the video is much easier, much more simple, much for this type of work than it is. I mean, it can be done, but it is more difficult. If you have the video link and you have a, a link to his work, then I would quote from the link, right? And, uh, and, and watch the video, but you have to realize as time permits. I'm going to have more time in the future right now in the transition and my health and the dentist appointments and everything that is making it more difficult. But if I can offer a little criticism without you getting mad at me, then what he has over here is going real good. There is no such thing as a church age. There's no such thing. We have been living in the same evil age, Galatians, not Galatians, Galatians 1 4. This evil age, we've been living in the same evil age since Genesis 1 2. All the way back when the earth was made void. God reconstituted. So, so many people think that God created this creation in six days and then he rested. That's not what happened. I know it sounds like blasphemy, right? The heaven, the original heaven and earth from Genesis 1-1 existed for eternities. No such thing as angels, no such thing as men. Only singularity hosts. Take the angel... Put the woman inside the man, the man inside the angel, and those are singularity hosts. That was mentioned before. Okay? So whenever the earth was made formless and void, then you had the heavens above and the heavens below. They were the, the power from on high, which was the heavens, overshadowed the waters. That begat the expanse, the firmament in the middle, heaven. It's a, it's, that was created. Okay? It, it, but it is begotten. Like the sun was begotten. There are things that are created and there are things that are begotten. We'll get into that sometime, particularly whenever you, one of you asks the question. Okay? You have the ability to manipulate the narrative here. Because your question, it's, right now it's on this topic because that's what Dina wrote me. But when I go to my inbox for an entire week and nobody sends me a question, then it's, guess who has the narrative, control of the narrative? That's me. Okay? There's no such thing as a church age. What we do have is a dispensation of God's grace. We are living in the kingdom. I mean, we're living in the dispensation of God's grace that the devil never saw. The kingdom period began, the kingdom dispensation. It's not a kingdom age. It's a kingdom dispensation. There's only one age at this moment. There are ages to come from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 7. The next age is going to begin in Revelation 21, with a new heaven and new earth. And guess what? There's going to be a new heaven and new earth for each age coming. God's going to remake this place hundreds and hundreds of times before we get to the end. That's going to happen. This is just the first transition. So we're still in the same evil age. There's no such thing as a church age. This makes me think dispensationalist. Whenever I see that word, I mean, argued with thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people on all these topics since before many of you were born. All right. So the way my mind works, whenever I start seeing phrases like this, then it, may, it obviously brings back memories and things. I'm not saying that that's what it is yet. I've seen just a few of Dr. Kim's videos, but I can see why that Dina likes him. Because I'm starting to like him too. Okay. But there are going to be errors. There. That's one of them. The, net, the other thing is, if you're going to be talking about 1 Corinthians 15.52, and don't, don't tell people that it's translated Trump. This word is used 11 times. And every time it is transfer, it's translated trumpet. It, it, well, it depends. You can go to the New American Standard. You, in some places, bugle. When you get in the four Gospels, some translators are going to translate that. But whenever they translate the... the uh, the word trumpet in that in their translation every all 11 uses are going to be the same trumpet there i have not seen in a uh, a uh, translation yet that had only these two trump and the rest trumpet i have never seen it I've, i went and looked for it when he said this new american standard the uh, new king james version modern translations they all say trumpet but the meaning of what he's saying is true Okay. In these verses, this is the sound of the trumpet. The thing that's missing here is Revelation 1.10. And 
And that's what I wrote. I don't know if I ever look at it. Dina, I hope that you'll write Dr. Kim, if you have his ear, and ask him to look in Revelation 1.10 because that's where these two trumpets are. It's the sound of the trumpet sounding off behind John. The trumpet sounding off behind John. He's standing in the Lord's day. This period is the Lord's day. Revelation is the Lord's day. He's standing in Revelation 1.10. Almost everybody misses this trumpet. This is the same trumpet that he's talking about right there. But it's the, called the final, the last trumpet for us. This ends the dispensation of God's grace. It has no meaning to anybody else in the Bible. It has no meaning for anybody that's prophetic. It doesn't mean anything. It's not a prophetic thing. It's only mentioned in 1 Corinthians 15 and 50 and uh, Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 4 in the Pauline epistles. And it's going to symbol, it's going to be the end of this period, the, vi the last thing. He makes some side comments that are really good, though. Okay. Okay. Now, whenever you're going to talk about this, you can talk about Revelation, Revelation 1.10, but no further. Do not even mention these end-time trumpets. Don't mention the tribulation. This happens at the end of the age. This happens to start the day of the Lord. This happens, this tribulation, great tri tribulation, Matthew 24, start, uh, 21. Revelation 7, start at 14. They happen at the end of the age. So our trumpet sounds 3,600 years before this. Don't put them on the same page like this and expect that somebody that is doctrinally sound is going to accept it because it's not going to happen. So I'm unwilling to compromise, but I am willing to help others to see the difference and to help Dr. Kim. I'm sure this guy's a real smart guy. I'm sure that there's things that he can help me with. The finer points, especially when breaking down the Hebrew, you know, looking at the roots, look at the prefixes, suffixes, and where it's used here. I'm, this this guy here is real smart. There are some things that has to be fixed in the doctrinal aspect of it. That's all I'm saying, and that's fine to be that way. I, I mean, it's fine for me. I hope that um, this is see where I'm getting off to 110. Our trumpet happens here. This is a book from the Mystery Explained. Mystery Church. See the, the same verses that he quoted? Dispensation of God's grace. The first resurrection happens here. The second resurrection happens here. Look how far they're separated. Peter, John, and James. Everybody that lived 2,000 years ago are resurrected here. They stand on the sea of glass. Revelation 7, 14 through 16. There they are. And those that are living through this period are being added to them. Everybody, all the kingdom disciples that die through this 3,600 year period period they're going to be martyred people are going to live to be a thousand years old again here too okay but whenever the the beast catches up to them and kills them they're not going to go into sheol and they're not just going to go to heaven they're going to go to the stand on the sea of glass with peter john and james and they are going to continue to be added there until the last one that's why scripture says this gospel of the kingdom go into the entire world and then the end will come the end comes when the last disciple gets martyred there's no more left the two witnesses are then born they testify and there's there's nobody on earth that god is going to call through the gospel of the kingdom the, the two witnesses are adam and eve from all the way back at the beginning they have the powers of elijah and they have the powers of moses because those are incarnations of adam and eve just like abraham and sarah just like david and bathsheba david looking over into the the pool sees bathsheba David is the heavens. Bathsheba is the earth. That's the typology. The types that are used throughout the text. As you see the three witnesses, you're going to see the types like I do. The, 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 the testimony coming from the pool of Bathsheba is going to be speaking within you. It's going to be bubbling inside of you. It's like angel song. And you're going to be able to see these things the way that I see these things so that you can draft these diagrams. These are in... Like I say, these were done more than 15 years ago. Not going to change anything. And I mean, if things would have come along and I said, oh, man, i got to change this because I grew, that would be one thing. And I have been growing. There's nothing in here I'd, that I'd change. The Christian debate. In your view, what is, what was, is the core theme of the Old Testament? I love doing this. Um... I was a member of 
Countering Biblical Contradictions, Andrew Tong, University of Southern California. Back in, before, uh, back in the 1990s, early 1990s, late 1980s, when like the, the internet just came out, 30,000 posts, 30,000 is what my number got up to. But uh, people would come up and try to give me a contradiction. None of them. The Bible does not have a contradiction. All we have is misinterpretations. We create our own contradictions because we don't understand it. Once you don't understand something, you're going to have contradictions, but that means you have to keep working and working to be able to see it. So the core theme, answered in one sentence, the core Old Testament theme is the prophets and the law the Lord God gave to Israel through Moses with the promise from God for his people to wait for a Redeemer, the Messiah, to save the world from Adam's fall. That's it. One sentence, boom. Sometimes they can be answered in one sentence. Sometimes you have to draw diagrams and you have to use a lot of verses. What is perfect? As soon as they say this word, this term, as soon as you use the word perfect, then I start going back in my mind and seeing the Greek. If you're going to work in the New Testament, you have to think in Greek. Old Testament, you're going to think in Hebrew. Or Aramaic. There's Aramaic terms used in the New and the Old Testament. Okay, But you have to think in those ancient languages, not the way you're thinking today. So this is the verse that comes to my mind right here. Love never fails, but if there are gifts of prophecy, they will be done away. And if there are gifts of tongues, they will cease. If there is knowledge, they will be done away. For we know in part, we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial will will be done away. Now this looks like a noun, doesn't it? Looks like a noun. But when you actually go to the Greek, this is going to be an adjective. Because in the Greek it's going to say, when that which is perfect comes. So they changed the that, to the which to that, and they made this, they translated, they transformed this, this adjective into a noun. And uh, that's what I mean about Dr. Kim. We can have debates, and I'm sure that he can beat me whenever you go to dissecting and trisecting the Hebrew, even though I'm good at that, real good at it. Did it with Hebrews on the Zola Livet bulletin board. Had 4,024 posts there. And we did a lot of that, those kind of things. Um, once I discovered the three witnesses, then that became less important. But this term, there's the number, Bible, the Bible, Blue Bible, refers to God's completed and perfect living and active word contained in the Holy Scriptures that we possess today. That's the perfect that came. Look at the context of when this letter was written. It was around 60, 61 AD. The final verse the, the the final words of the old testament i mean the the final words of the new testament are going to be penned in about 100 AD with revelation right there's paul's letters that aren't even written yet second P peter not even written yet so wh how, why is it that god's going to give us advantage give us complete word of god and he didn't give it to them living those living back in paul's day well god leveled the playing field he leveled the playing field by giving them the prophets the men of knowledge, and the gift of tongues. And people that, that babble, you're babbling out there in church, that's not the gift of tongues. The gift of tongues, go read Acts chapter 2, start at verse 1, and three times you're going to hear that they all heard in their own language. If a person is speaking in their own language, you don't hear anything different. When a guy is speaking in French and you're hearing in English, that's tongues. A German guy gets up and he's speaking. I hear it in English, and that guy beside me is French. He hears it in French. Not only that, he hears it in his hometown dialect. That is the gift of tongues. Vain babbling is not tongues. Man, I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. And I have to say that to at my family reunions because I'm from a family of ministers, and some of them are Church of God, Holy Roller, tongue speaking, all that. And we have some real knockdown dragouts. <laughs> at our whenever we come together okay so um that's the perfect the perfect is the word of god we get our prophecy from the word of god we get our knowledge from the word of god right well they didn't have that chance back then so those sign gifts you think you, i've heard so from so many people they have the gift of prophecy they have the gift of knowledge they have the gift of tongues blah 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 no guess what that was done away now you have an interpretation of God's living word that's alive in you. The spirit of the word is living inside of you, is communing with your spirit, testifying that you're a son of God. 
right? Now you've got that testimony to share with other people, but it came from, guess where, the Word. It came from God's Word. It, it, the Word is incarnate inside of you. That's heaven inside of you. That's the new man. That's where it's coming from. That's what I'm sharing with you. Having the mind of Christ, 1 Corinthians 2.16, means that the new man is living inside of you. You have advantages over the natural man that can't even begin to understand the spiritual side of anything. He can only see the old nature. Everything's black and white to him. Two-dimensional. That's the way that it is. Having the mind of Christ means that those around you, that they cannot even discern what you're about. They, they just can't discern you. They, they, they just can't do it. And I get that sometimes. And I'm sure if you're a Christian that you get that sometimes too. It's the way that it works. The Bible is the only true theology. See, this is at ChristianForums.net. Here I am giving my testimony. And why I'm writing these to, to help them on that website and to share it with you in this newsletter. This is what I'm doing every Monday. You can find me at that other website on Mondays, maybe even on Sunday and Monday. Because I'm, I'm helping people there and I'm taking the content and putting in this newsletter for you. Can't even go here because I got banned. Okay, so um, here's the explanation of it. Now, this is getting to be very, very long. These beginning, starting off, there's a lot, there's a lot of changes in news and things like that. Eventually, they're going to become shorter and shorter. These weekly reports. Now, I like to go through more than the top stories of the week. Now, this newsletter is uh, is kind of obtaining an identity. See the new headings that have been made out of necessity? My clarifying statements? The Bible debate part? That's how this is going to work. And you guys, even YouTubers, you're not a supporter, you don't, you, you're not a uh, newsletter subscriber. You, when I read your comments, and I apologize, I'm very busy right now if I can't get there, but when I read your comments, then I, I'm reading them and you guys have an influence on me. I mean, if you're being mean to me and stuff, I have very thick skin. I'm, it's just going to roll off me. But whenever you give me an idea or something like that, a topic that needs to be in the newsletter or something like that, then boom, the light comes on, and then you and then you can be part of that. So New Zealand volcano, this look, looks like a black star thing, doesn't it? But thing to realize, the top stories of the week, the signs of the times. We are about to be taken, and I'm going to be derelict. If I try to pretend like everything's going to just going to be fine, it's not. It's going to be fine for us. We're going to be taken just as the destruction's coming upon this world. So the evidences that we have is going to be in the signs of the times section. Okay, and this is in from Bonnie. This is uh, what's happening, and this is uh, in our economic environment. The ways that things are changing, the way that the poor are being treated. In our days, the study shows concentration camps could happen in America. Signs of the Times. This is a Signs of the Times, but some of these are top stories. Colorado's upcoming part um, part in Civil War II consists of ex special agent ops. There's a lot of scary stuff that's going on out there. And I would like to be able to make this a safe haven where we just discuss Bibles. Uh, topics and things like that, but that's not reality. So then, those were the top stories. Th then you get into the signs of the times. All the fish are gone in Alaska. First time they had to close the fishery. You would see this in the Earth Changes or in the top story in the other newsletter. There are a few stories that are in this newsletter that would be in the other one. And then our... Um, our intu intuition about sea level. Rolf sent this in. Being wrong. Not going to agree with everything this guy says either. A lot, a lot of the what it's going to affect the sea level is going to be the tide. It's going to be the tidal forces of the moon and the sun. So as the water is released from the caps, it doesn't just sit there. Earth is rotating. It's rotating a thousand miles an hour at the equator, barely moving at the at the North Pole, but it's also at the equator where the moon and the sun pass over. You see, 
So that's the that's the reality. So I'm going to follow part of his argument. Then politics, establishment, censoring media, Christians being censored. That falls right in with my with my um, being censored, being banned. Economics, stimulus, health and wellness. This is the same one from last week. Take your pick. Top 10 Christian health and fitness blogs. As there are more and more members, then you guys are going to be controlling the narrative more. And you're going to be sending me health and wellness. And that's this is where it's going to go. Until then, I want to give you the most options as possible. You might like this one this week. You might realize that hey, maybe it's this one, that one. And then you might be sharing an article with me from this one. That will go into this section next week. Chat room corner. This is the instructions on what's about to happen. I pretty much explained to you on what's going, you know, kind of what's happening up there. This is a Monday Tuesday program. Like the Black Star is a Wednesday Thursday program. That's what it boils down to. And then radio show links and things at the bottom. That's under construction. It's eventually going to look. It's it's really the links from the old the the, the Black Star newsletter, but it's going to be growing as more of my interviews I'm going to when I get time then I'm going to upload some of my old interviews from the Black Star channel to this one then they'll become links here too so that's what I want to share with you for this week appreciate you guys support very very much hope to call out your name hope to see you in chat those of you who want the opportunity to uh, meet with us in chat tonight at seven o'clock all you have to do is subscribe and you'll have the instructions in your notification email because I will have that page open why I'm in chat and I get that information to you right away. You can join us, and you can. Uh, if I have my, any voice left, then I'll be. Um, you can come up right up to the mic, ask your question. I'll answer. Happy to answer your questions. On uh, pull up an article, put the article. Say, hey, look at this. What do you think about this? And I'll, I'll be your resource. It's really what I was at Terrell's Research Group for. Uh, lots of people, physicists, astronomers, um, Christians, like this John. And then. Uh, that's the way that the things work then. This this new group, you see, I'm, I'm there by myself. Unless, uh, unless this John. I'm there by myself. So there's nobody going in, nobody else. This is all brand new. Tonight at 7 o'clock, this is where we're going to be. You're invited to be there. All you have to do is uh, subscribe. And um, I'll send you all the information, and then um, you know, we'll take it from there. I'm really looking forward to this um, program growing after the first of the year. I understand that it's just starting. Anything you just start off is going to be going to be slow. So once you're here, then your your name will appear here, and then you'll just come over here, and you'll click on this. And you'll say, hey, how you doing? And everybody in the room can hear you. Oh, it's pretty cool. It's taking things to the next step from um, presentations, newsletters, and then video, YouTube, and then personal exchange, back and forth right here. So thank you guys again. Get more information. And if you're... Um, Looking for the premium program, so you can do chat room. The premium programs are right here. This is the Black Star, and this is the uh, the Christian Tutor program. That's right here. Everybody that subscribes, you get the ebook version of my book, The Mystery Explained, attached to your notification email. So you could come subscribe right now. Come to. Um, I'm going to send you a notification email. My book's going to be attached to it. You can start reading my book. And then you can show up to chat, and we can talk about it to this evening. Now, that's pretty cool. Appreciate your support, and I'll see you guys on the next um, number three. Make a special report during the week if I can, and I'll see you on the next um, the four Gospels of the New Testament. Next Tuesday, right here, another nice lengthy report like this one. So uh, until then, I'll see you guys.